What do you usually get in the mail? Bills? Or bulls? Well, if you've joined the growing ranks of folks who create what they call mail art, chances are your P.O. box is bulging with things that will make you wonder where to stick your stamp. It's got the address over here, and then over here it has a little note. It says, Dear Postmaster, this is a real honest piece of mail I wish to have delivered. Mark Block's been getting weird mail for 10 years. He started wearing the ears when he dubbed himself PAN. That stands for Postal Art Network. Now he spends a couple of thousand dollars a year on postage. When he runs out of people to send stuff to, he simply consults a huge list of like-minded souls called the Strangers Directory. How many addresses are on here? Thousands of addresses. So who do I send it to? I send it to all these people. I send it to my mother. I send it to people that I meet. You know, I'll get your address. I'll send you something. You know, it's just, it's just a way of communication. So is that a mailing list that you have? Or you just... No, I'm mailing these to all the addresses I've lived and they'll all come back from off the dress the unknown. So. Communication is part of the game, yeah. but so is testing the limits and patience of the post office. At one point, there was this thing called the postman's choice, where it had more than one address, and the postman had to decide where it was going to be delivered. I've had situations before, another male artist, that literally sent a hard-boiled egg in the mail with a stamp on it. Mark, do you think this will go through the mail? Through rain, snow, and globs of paste, most mail art does get through. I've seen letters that were encased in condoms. The weirdest I've seen was a message that, um, that was written on a used toilet paper roll. This is the post office where Mark Block has his box, number 1500. And apparently, he's something of a postal celebrity. I know that he gets a lot of mail. Uh, he gets a lot of big boxes. I can tell that he's in the arts from some of the mail that he gets because he gets a lot of uh, postcards on unusual type things. Now, because you've got mail art, you send it, you get it. That makes coming to the post office a little more exciting than just the usual collection of bills that might drink the rest of us. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, I live for this. OK. And do you mail stuff to yourself? Sometimes if I do like a large edition of things that are all the same, I, I kind of send one to myself so I can see how it looked to everyone else when they got it. Just one right back in there. So, it's a good haul, I think. <laughs> For mail artists, the post office is like the racetrack, a test of skill and luck. Can you get your mail mailed? As best I can determine, these stamps are under yeah, scotch they tape, are. so once again, getting canceled is not really on the stamp. Well, they might just cancel it, you know, on top of the tape, but um, I may need to add some more stamps to it. I don't know. <laughs> so when you come here, you never have any idea of whether or not you're going to be successful. No, it's like playing the lottery. Kim played the game by attempting to mail a matchbox and two bags of beans to Japan. Well, first of all, you have to put them in the bag. They are in a bag. They're wrapped in plastic. They're wrapped in plastic. It's going to take Kim about 10 minutes at the window to get this guy to finally mail her beans. Meanwhile, Mark is making new pen pals. Want to lick it? <laughs> yes, it's a lively scene at the post office. You're not supposed to put any scotch tape on these stamp pieces. Have, have you done that in the past? Scotch tape on the stamp? Oh, yeah, I've broken every rule with the post okay. office. I have, I confess. Okay, you got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you can arrest me now. <laughs> Of course, Mark isn't about to be outclassed. The post office is his home, his playground, his canvas. Can you postmark these for me? I want him to cancel everything in a very certain way. Can you just put the postmark just in the lower left-hand corner? No, 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 right there. So it's a love-hate thing for me and for them. But mostly, it's love. Mail artists are so intense because they believe that pretty soon, personal mail will be a thing of the past. All of our communication will be by phone, fax, or computer. Until that day, they have one request. Keep those cards and letters coming. ...of mail art to visit mail and computer artist Mark Bloch. Um, Mark Bloch? who calls himself yeah. Pan, P-A-N, like the uh, Greek god. Yeah. Mark, I feel so familiar when I see you, already like the first time in Belgium, and still I know so little of you. And now you surprise me in a completely different outfit. What are you doing here? Uh, 
this is where I work uh, to make money, and it has the uh, added bonus of uh, giving me the liberty to, to work on some of my own work um, when I'm not doing the work for money. Uh, so, uh, basically, I'm uh, getting so much, so tired of all this paperwork and everything, the mail art and the envelopes, uh, I'm just becoming uh, addicted to the electron, and I'm just uh, trying to do everything I can to use the electronic media to uh, make my art. I've always been interested in it, and uh, now a lot of it, the last couple of years, a lot of it has been coming to fruition. I've gotten, you know, access to the equipment here, which I don't think I would have, you know, using my own means, but luckily I work for these uh, generous people who uh, allow me to do my own work. So right now we're in a... a video editing uh, facility, three-quarter inch uh, editing, and this is a, uh, on the left is the uh, last male art show that I did in Carlo Pittori's window in uh, on 10th Street last summer. You are doing what we are dreaming of. <laughs> oh, yeah? This is wonderful, this facility. We are hampering around with just a few machines, uh, trying to get somewhere into the studio. I'm very much interested in that. Yeah. And we have the difficulties of converting the system. Could you also play a foul on that? I don't think so, no. Sometimes it feels a little bit schizophrenic, and then on a certain days, and then on other days, it feels like my art and my and my money-making activity are the same. You know, it just depends on if I'm doing something that I enjoy or if I'm just doing something only for the money that I'm not enjoying at all, even though it does. Many, of, but many of the men artists um, will envy you for that. They're too jealous. Well, I decided to wear a tie just to drive the point home and, and just look extremely official and uh, let them uh, let them complain about how I have uh, uh, mixed mail art and money to the ultimate degree. So this is a Cibachrome print that a friend of mine made for me off of the 35 millimeter slide that was produced on the slide tech. So uh, basically this is just a photograph uh, made from uh, transparency. And that is to contrast with this, this painting by Carlo Pittori, see, which is, uh, this is this is digital, I'd say this is analog, made with oil paint, and uh, took about three years to do. It's a completely different story. Every single mark made by hand, as opposed to the photograph where uh, nothing was made by hand. Although I, I should qualify that I did have to painstakingly draw each one of those pans. It's not like you can just tell the computer draw a picture of uh, Mark Block's pan, you still have to draw it, but it's just uh, more electronic. And, uh, well, Carlo Pittori would be very happy to uh, know that we are looking at his painting. He's very proud of it. He's actually a very good painter. He has good reason to be proud. He works very hard at his paintings and uh, kind of believes not so, I, I believe more in the electronic uh, media. It's just my age and, and my environment where I grew up. He's uh, pretty much into the old masters, and uh, I'm glad that some people are still interested in that. I personally don't care for it, but I like to look at it. I just just moved uh, four inches north, seven inches east. Uh, it moved up from a four field to an 11 field and it went in a 350 degree rotation.
Mark, we have seen your metamorphosis from a bank clerk into a half god. Now, uh, could you please tell us where this pun idea comes from? Is he a bank clerk? No, I really meant office clerk. Yeah, well, I'm not even an office clerk, but at any rate, uh, well, pan means all, you know. Uh, it, it's the idea, like pan American or pan African or pantheism is the belief that uh, all things are God. And, uh, well, it actually started out as PAN, Postal Art Network. And uh, from there, uh, it just began to grow into other things. I realized the more things I found out about the word pan, um, the more I liked it. So, uh, first I just discovered all this idea of, like I say, pantheism, uh, panacea, uh, stuff like that. It means all. Then I began to uh, work with the idea of the uh, mythological figure from uh, Greek mythology, the uh, god of forests, fields, flocks, and subsequently the god of uh, nightmares, madness, uh, fornication, masturbation, uh, all this kind of stuff. So he's just sort of this little mischievous guy, and uh, I have some of his qualities, and so I decided that it was a perfect uh, accident, like, like most accidents. It actually worked out well. Thank you very much. Dave Mark Bloch on the east coast of the United States is convinced and proving that Maillard and technology do mix. Then I know someone on the west coast who is as much convinced that Maillard and money do not mix.